five E, it's more about like, okay, this is the thing that happens if your change if your change is forced, it then kind of gets kicked to the DM and they decide how you know how it works, how it affects yeah. your character. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Nerdarchy. Nerdarchy. For, For nerds, by, by nerds. nerds. All right, so we got a, a, a fresh topic to talk about today, and that's going to be lycanthropes. Yeah, specifically playing play a lycanthrope or werebeast in your next D and D game. Uh, so this video kind of came about. Uh, I know we have a very difference of opinion here, but I, I watch you know a number of streamed games, and in a recent game, you know there was a, a couple episodes apart. You know there were a couple things happening with. Lycanthropes, you know, there were were rats and were jack or jackal wares, uh, and then you know some mention of werewolves, and I'm like, all right. One of the players, you know, was very close to like they had gotten bitten by a were rat, and like, oh, you know, they could have become a were rat if they wouldn't have if they would have failed that con save. I just I'm just laughing because I'm just thinking of the other players testing them. How do you feel about this cheese now? <laughs> So, you know, I started I started looking up, you know, the information on the different were creatures that are a part of 5e officially. And I know, or you know, that I'm a big fan of lycanthropes in general. So I'm like, you know, I think it's time for us to have a conversation and kind of ask the question of like, you know, why isn't there more, you know, lycanthrop, lycanthrop stuff that's out there? You know, why aren't there like games going on of why, you know, why is there no all lycanthrope games? You know, what's going on? Well, I feel like the Bloodhunter lycan is like as close as you're, you're going to get right now unless sure. you actually use lycanthropes. It does ratchet up the power level because, you know, you have stat improvements when you talk about lycanthropes. Also, just uh, what was the game you were watching? Who uh, so it's, uh, you know, my, my friend Jake from Mini Terrain Domain, and that was happening in the Scribes and Scrolls game that he runs on Monday nights over on uh, twitch.com slash mini terrain domain. Cool. So, yeah. So, you know, in previous editions, right, it came up a lot more often. Um, there were ECLs and also, you know, being, you know, having like anthropy affected your character much more. Like it changed your stats a bit more. And, you know, we definitely had one player that always wanted to play werebears. Yeah. Uh, yep. did, you know, that's it's just their jam. You know, and ECL, if you're not, if you haven't been around the block, it's equivalent character level. It was a third edition kind of kind of thing where you applied a template and it came with a set of abilities and stat bonuses that would uh, equivalate to a character level. Sometimes there were then monster levels that you had on top of that. So it was like, oh, well, you have three monster levels and three ECL. So if you were to play a first level character with that, you would be able to play that with a seventh level party. So yeah, it was it was a nightmare to very to mathy. Fun. I don't know if they still do that in Pathfinder or not, but it, I'm it not sure. It was a hardcore thing in third edition, and it came up in some of our games. Absolutely, and we had we had quite a lot of fun with you know those kinds of games. But when I look at you know the very minimalistic viewpoint of what you get out of being a lycanthrope in Five E, you know it's really not that much more drastic than you know what you see in you know in, in a typical 5e game so i wonder like was there was there a, a viewpoint at one point in time of like okay we're gonna put this out there and just see what happens or like was it a viewpoint of like oh well we want player characters to be lycanthropes and you know have control of their transformations and have fun with it or was it just kind of like yeah you know let's just you know throw it out there and see what happens yeah, in 5e, it's like done as a sidebar. Yes. So uh, we have an article over on the website of how to play a vampire or a werewolf in your 5e, 5e game. There's going to be a, a link down in the description or a card up over here if you want to go check that out and, you know, kind of get into, you know, more of these monstrous player character options or another take on it. You can definitely go in that direction. All right. So let's kind of dissect a little, a little bit and look at it. What do you get? from being a were creature in 5A. So, all right, so all in all, every single lycanthrope form, you're gonna have the ability to turn into the animal or to turn into the hybrid as, as you see fit. Um, you know, there is the whole ability of the, were, the, the moon causing you to, to make a change, uh, but there doesn't seem to be anything specifically calling out of like, 
you lose control and you become a murderous monster when that happens. It just is like you have to change. So each DM is going to kind of play that aspect as they will. Um, you know, I know in earlier editions there was, you know, like you could make concentration type things to kind of retain control. I forget exactly what the mechanic was, but that's the... There was very the... specific rules and there were feats you could take, yeah. is what I recall. Yeah, in <laughs> 5e it's more about like, okay... This is the thing that happens if your change if your change is forced, it then kind of gets kicked to the DM and they decide how you know how it works, how it affects you know, your character. You know, and it could you could go everywhere from a for the moment your character becomes an NPC and the GM does what they will with you, or it could just very well be down to you know make a concentration check or a wisdom saving throw to retain control and you know you now are yourself, whatever. Uh, but you know, outside of your hybrid and animal form, each particular animal type gets an assigned stat if it's not already that or higher and some of them have additional abilities so like your were bear gets a strength of a 19 and a plus one to ac while in hybrid or you know animal form your were rat gets a dex of 15 your bat gets a dex of 17 a climb and a fly speed in your uh hybrid form the boar gets a 17 strength and a plus one in AC in animal or hybrid form. They're also going to get uh, a charge attack, and that's going to be linked to, or the, the save on that is going to be linked to their strength score, as you would expect. The raven is going to get a dex of 15, and they also get a flight in their hybrid form. Obviously, they get it in their animal form as well. They're a raven. Your tiger is going to get a strength of 17 and a pounce ability. The wolf is going to get a strength of 15 and a plus one AC in their animal and hybrid form. You know, and that's, that's the ones that I was able to find over on D&D Beyond. I know in previous editions and in other games, there's plenty of other were creatures. Uh, third edition, I know like you could pretty much have a were anything, and it just attributed to whatever the CR of the, of the animal was. Uh, and by the way, dinosaurs were animals, so you could totally be a were dinosaur. Totally did an island of were dinosaurs um, in third edition. Yeah, um, I, yes, it was very much more open, and I think you, there was a template to, in order to you, use the animal and change it over. Also, like in fifth edition, it just, like you said, it has a minimum stat. So, uh, so technically, you might not even get any better, right? Like, if you're already stronger than a werebear, if you have a 20 strength, like your strength doesn't go up or down. It's just, uh, it's just going to be the 20. If yeah, you're the, more dexterous. The, the only thing that you're going to get would be that, you know, that plus one to AC when you turn into an animal or your hybrid. Like, so when I look at these things, uh, you know, if you were to... Also damage resistance, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> you know, when, when you look, when you take away the stat modifiers, the, the things that they get are rather small like okay you know silver or magic you know uh, resistance you know is kind of cool but once you kind of get up into the levels it's not really that big a deal and like if you're playing all lycanthropes then very much like that could be your adversaries the you know they could be using weapons specifically trying to hurt you so then it just does normal damage so it's not that big a yeah deal. i feel like for the most part you would just consider your your adventuring party a couple levels higher than they actually are for figuring out encounters and stuff like that. Like you could literally do a first level campaign and start them off and everyone has a wear form, you know, whether it's, you know, all the same or all different. Eventually what's going to happen is, you know, the, the player's characters are gonna advance beyond the wear creatures and it won't matter anymore. Those, the only thing that'll end up mattering is some of their special abilities will still be useful and cool, and those resistances will still matter. But all that other stuff, like stats, like if that's the main thing your character does, they're gonna quickly grow past that. If it's not the main thing your character does, it's not gonna be relevant in the game for the most part. So like, you know, starting off at first level, if you decided to do this, like, okay, so all the characters have double the hit points that a normal first level character would have. So when I look at this, like the 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 uh, the were rat, the were raven, and the werewolf all get a fifteen, and you know for that it's it's you know it's either going to be strength or dex. So yeah, somebody might decide to game the system. I'm like, okay, you know, well I'm gonna put my eight there because I know that this is happening, and you know, so so be it. Uh, but like you could easily have those, and if you've got a fifteen at first level, even if it's an extra fifteen. 
it's it's not gonna break the game. You know, my son recently rolled stats for a game, and his stats are through the roof. Like, it's utterly ridiculous. He did it right there in front of me. His low stat is a 13, but he rolled like three 15s. And I'm like, oh my God, it was crazy. Um, so I have to deal with that character in the party, and he's trying to be the tank. So dealing with a whole party of increased stats it can absolutely happen, so why it's not? It's easier than dealing with just the one character, in my right. opinion. Right, I, I would agree, because you could kind of look at it all. So if you wanted to then look at, you know, oh, well, at fourth level, characters tend to get an ASI. Well, there you could open that up, and the other ones that have a 17, your, your bat, your boar, and your tiger, that get that free 17, again, in either strength or dex, you know, that that's on par with what characters that are fourth level would have because they're already going to have those those 16 17s anyway now it, it's it's only in their hybrid and animal forms that they have the increased stat right like, no that that's just that is that is what you're okay it's is. always that much higher okay uh you know and then like technically if you are min maxing your character you have a 16 at first level so the 17 is not super game breaking but if you wanted to be like well i want to i want to keep this threat you know you know even a little bit you know but fourth level characters could have an 18 so again you know your 19 for your wear bear might be one of those aspects that are like oh maybe this is too powerful so like at sixth level i think all the characters have the capacity to kind of be in these increased stat ranges anyway. So I'm not really overly worried about the stat aspect. You know, the, you know, changing shape and becoming animals is not really that big of a deal for me. Um, you know, you know, somebody might try and game the system as druids do of like, oh, well, I'll be an animal. And once all those animal, you know, animal hit points are gone, then I'll go back to being me again. And then I'll go back to being an animal. Uh, so like, you do have have the the aspects of increased survivability, you know, from the damage reduction and from you know the the alternate form, you know. But you could play so many different style games of like, okay, you know, well, you're just going to be animals, and now this thing is going on, and like, I, I just think that there could be so many different types of stories that are told from this aspect when it's not really. Any, any major game-breaking mechanics like there were in, you know, oh, you're going to be a, a, a werebear plus eight to strength. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, it's an addition, too. It's, that's not <laughs> yeah. a replacement. So, you know, what do you think a, a Lycanthrope like, game would look like? So, you know, I, I like games that focus on, you know, religion, factions. So, you know, what if you had a deity that liked lycanthropes or you know was about the moon which lycanthropes always have have a fascination with and you know perhaps you're trying to change the mind or maybe you're trying to deal with enemy lycanthropes you know perhaps there's you know two factions one is you know a goodly set of lycanthropes one is an evil set of lycanthropes and you are at at odds at war with each other you know if everyone has the ability to shape change and everyone has these you know extra abilities then you're all on even keel other than you know the minor differences between the 15 and the 19 you know at its you know lowest and highest so like i think that there's there's fun to be had there and i just think lycanthropes are cool and i want to play one <laughs> So uh, would you see this as being like they all are the same lycanthrope or they're different lycanthropes? So I would be cool with, you know, completely either. Uh, it is definitely fun to be, you know, part of a pack and you're all one thing. But I would be also down for like, all right, you know, for whatever reason, this is a group of lycanthropes that all work together and they're not trying to, to spread the disease to those who who don't want it. You know, they, they look for people who can get a cure for those who have it and want to get rid of it. Um, but they could be bringing in, you know, lycanthropes to kind of get them out of the mindless savagery and either put them down, cure them, or bring them into the fold. So, like, you, you would have exploration, role-playing, and combat all all in one storyline if you were looking at it from the all types. 
I like the idea of a moon deity summoning, you know, a bunch of all the all the player characters and like, you know, uh, charging them with a quest. And, you know, part of that quest is receiving a boon from the moon deity. And, you know, that boon being I'm going to awaken your inner, your, 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 your the, the, uh, this, the animal, your soul, um, correlates to or you know your inner beast or you know however that you want to word it right and and then the player chooses what kind of where creature they are uh, and in 5e you have a very limited list you might you might find some third party stuff that gives you um some other where creatures to choose from you just got to watch and make sure it's kind of like on par with sure the way 5e did it and or you know the official stuff did it so that they're not like way beyond the scope of uh, the rest of the party. Yeah, I would look at those those aspects and make sure that they all line up. Um, you know, like I look at this as again that 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 tiered segment of you know fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, and I wouldn't want anything that you know goes beyond that because let's face it, you know the wear bear is kind of like the creme de la creme, uh, and if you start looking at like oh well, what do wear dinosaurs do or what yeah. do wear dinosaurs look like? You know, as much as I love those those ideas, wear like, dragons was a know, thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like that that then begins pushing the boundaries beyond like you know what is within the scope of you know the purview of this video and what is already out uh, there. Yeah, Ted, I want to play in this campaign and. My, my 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 inner animal, my inner beast is a dragon. <laughs> All right. So. Well, you 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 can be a dragon toad or a dragon you know <laughs> lizard. Um, you know, we don't have a wear lizard, but we can find something. For you. Yeah. So you know, the question is, would you guys use this in your game? Uh, have you done it in your game? What do you think of the All I Can't Throw Party? Is it too powerful? Is it not powerful enough? Let us know in the comments below. Share your thoughts and ideas with the Nerdarchy community. While you're down, don't, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, even go ahead and you know, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Quick reminder, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we drop new videos here on the channel. So come on back, but you can't wait till then. No worries, we got you covered. There's a card up here, Were Creature Organizations. What brings all the Were Beasts together? So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.